Hi, my name is Dr. Frederick Edward Fabella, and I will be discussing the overview of clinical psychology, part one, origins and relevance. Let's begin. So what is clinical psychology? Clinical psychology is the branch of psychology concerned with the assessment and treatment of mental illness, abnormal behavior, and psychiatric problems. This field integrates the science of psychology with the treatment of complex human problems, making it an exciting career choice for people who are looking to work in a challenging and rewarding field. Okay, let's consider a brief history. Early influences on the field of clinical psychology include the work of Austrian psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud. He was one of the first to focus on the idea that mental illness was something that could be treated by talking with the patient. And it was the development of his talk therapy approach that is often cited as the earliest scientific use of clinical psychology. American psychologist Leitner Whitmer opened the first psychological clinic in 1896 with a specific focus on helping children who had learning disabilities. It was also Whitmer who first introduced the term clinical psychology in a 1907 paper. Whitmer, a former student of Wilhelm Wundt, defined clinical psychology as the study of individuals by observation or experimentation with the intention of promoting change. Clinical psychology became established during the period of World War I as practitioners demonstrated the usefulness of psychological assessments. In 1917, the American Association of Clinical Psychology was established, although it was replaced just two years later with the establishment of the American Psychological Association. During World War II, clinical psychologists were called upon to help treat what was then known as shell shock, now referred to as post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. While the early focus in clinical psychology had been largely on science and research, graduate programs began adding additional emphasis on psychotherapy. In clinical psychology PhD programs, this approach is today referred to as the scientist practitioner or bolder model. Later, the doctor of psychology degree option emerged, which placed a greater emphasis on professional practice rather than research. The practice-oriented doctorate degree in clinical psychology is known as the practitioner, scholar, or veil model. So we now see that there are two branches. PhD is more on research, while PsyD is more on clinical practice. Okay, so let's consider the aims of clinical psychology. The aim of clinical psychology is to understand, predict, and treat or alleviate disorders disabilities, or any kind of maladjustment. This aim involves a variety of clinical specialties and competencies such as the assessment of problems or impairments, the formulation of problems which is linked to clinical judgment, and the indicated treatments for these problems. A second aim is to act on a preventative level to promote human adaptation adjustment and personal development, thereby placing a focus also on the prevention of mental health conditions. Okay, let's consider the clinical psychologist. Clinical psychology is inherently an area of applied research which transfers findings into practice. Clinical psychologists are involved in research, teaching, and supervision, program development and evaluation, consultation, public policy, professional practice, and other activities that promote psychological health in individuals, families, 
groups, and organizations. In terms of work settings, these include individual practice, mental health service units, managed health care organizations, counseling centers, and different departments in hospitals, schools, universities, industry, legal systems, medical systems, and government agencies. Okay. So let's consider famous case studies wherein clinical psychologists were very much involved. So who was Phineas Gage? The case of Phineas Gage is one of the most cited cases in psychology. This famous case study showed how different areas of the brain affect personality and cognitive ability. While working as a construction foreman on a railroad, Phineas Gage was involved in an accident in which a rod was pushed through his cheek and brain. He survived, but as a result of the accident, both his personality and his ability to learn new things were greatly affected. Okay, so let's consider a next uh, case study, the feral child. Feral children are children who are raised without human interaction, usually as a result of abuse or neglect. One famous case study of a feral child was the child known as Jeannie. She was raised in a single bedroom with little human interaction. She never gained the cognitive ability of a normal adult, even though she was found at age 13. In fact, later in life, she regressed and stopped speaking altogether. Her case has been studied extensively by psychologists who want to understand how enculturation affects cognitive development. Okay, so let's consider the case of Henry Molaison. This is a case study that helped psychologists understand memory. It is perhaps the most famous case study in neuroscience. Henry Molaison was in a, in a childhood accident that left him with debilitating seizures. Doctors were able to stop the seizures by removing slivers of his brain's hippocampus though at the time they did not fully understand what they were doing. As a result, scientists learned how important the hippocampus is to forming long-term memories. After the surgery, Molaison was no longer able to form long-term memories, and his short-term memory was very brief. The case study started further research into memory and the brain. Okay, let's consider the case of Jill Price. Ms. Price is one of a few documented cases of hyperthymesia or an overactive memory that allowed her to remember such mundane things as what she had for dinner on an average day in August 20 years previously. Her case study was used as a jumping off point to research how the memory works and why some people have exceptional memories. However, through more research, it was discovered that her overall memory was not exceptional. Rather, she only remembered deta details of her own life. She was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder with memories being part of her obsession. This case study is still relevant because it, it has helped modern psychologists understand how mental illness affects memory. Okay, let's consider the case of John Joan. In the John Joan case study, a reputable sexologist tested his theory that nurture, not nature, determined gender. The case study has been cited extensively and laid the groundwork for other research into gender identity. Unfortunately, the case study was not legitimate. In this study, Dr. John Monet performed surgery on an infant whose penis was damaged during circumcision. The boy was raised as a girl. However, he never identified as female and eventually went through more surgery to become male again. Because Dr. Monet didn't follow up with the patient appropriately and did not report adverse findings, the case study is still often cited as being successful. Okay, let's consider the case of Anna O. Anna O was the pseudonym given to a German woman who was one of the first people to undergo psychoanalysis. Her case inspired many of the theories of Freud and other prominent psychologists of the time. It was determined that at that time, Anna's symptoms of depression and illness were eliminated through talk therapy. 
more recently it has been suggested that Anna O oh had another illness such as epilepsy from which she may have recovered during the period of time that the therapy lasted. This case study is still cited as a reason psychologists believe that psychotherapy or talk therapy can be helpful to many patients. And let's consider the case of Chris Sizemore. One of the most famous case studies in psychology is that of Chris Sizemore. She was one of the first people to be diagnosed with multiple personality disorder, now called dissociative identity disorder. In her case, the alter personalities were all merged into one personality over which she had control. She did, however, remember specific events in her life as happening to specific personalities. Her case, diagnosis, and treatment informed treating this mental disorder in a variety of cases over the years. And it was even turned into a movie, which is entitled Eve. Okay, so that ends my discussion on the overview of clinical psychology, origins, and relevance. If you wish to stay updated with my upcoming lectures, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Prof. Eric F. And please visit my blog, meaningsandperceptions.blogspot.com. Thank you very much.